in this video, we're going to do a custom gaming build mainly specifically for last year when it comes out. However, I am going to be doing a lot of other horror games on Steam as well with this. Now, Silverstone did send me this case for free, and it is the RVZ-03, which has a built-in RGB light strip. Now, this case does support both Mini ITX and Mini DTX motherboards, does contain spots for multiple 2.5-inch hard drives, and has an adjustable graphic card holder. Now, some of the things I really like about this case is the fact that it has tons of fans. There's three fans built in. The vents are perfectly done. There's even a vent at the top because heat rises, so it's always good to have a vent at the top to allow it to escape. Now some other really cool accessories that this case comes with are rubber feet to help keep it standing vertically. Now it also comes with rubber feet so you can set it down horizontally as well. However, you are going to be blocking a vent if you set it that way. Now this case also does have two front USB 3.0 ports for the power supply. I went with the Strider 750 watt 80 plus platinum by Silverstone. Now 750 watts gives me enough power to where if I want to upgrade anything later on as well as it's small enough to fit in the case and it's so damn quiet you can't even hear it running so there won't be any noise being picked up by the microphone. Now when you open up the case you're going to notice that there are a couple of extra cards in there. This is to help extend the room for the graphic card to get it to fit properly. There's going to be two cards to help you achieve this obviously based on your graphic card. Now for the motherboard I went with Gigabyte's Z2 709 Gaming 5 which allows for the 7 270 chipset core inside vr ready rgb fusion you know so you can have that little fancy look there some of the features i really liked about this itx motherboard was the fact that it has usb type c it has 3.1 usb it's vr ready which you're going to notice all my components are vr ready because we're going to be heading there in the future on this channel as well it has the Smart Fan 5 feature, which has five sensors in five different placements of the motherboard, which allows me to monitor, obviously, five different spots. Now, this Gigabyte motherboard also comes with an external Wi-Fi antenna. Now, having an external Wi-Fi antenna is going to make speeds much faster because it's not dealing with all the interference from inside the case. But whenever you're gaming, you should always use an Ethernet cable. You should never use Wi-Fi. Now, this motherboard also allows me to run SSD, which is located on the bottom of the motherboard. Now, SSD is just basically a flash drive, which allows me to do lightning speeds for specific software. So the SSD that I chose to go with is a Samsung 960 Evo M2. I know some of you are going to be like, why don't you just go with the Intel Optane? Well, the Intel Optane is really just a name brand, and the 960 Evo by Samsung tested at much faster speeds than the Intel Optane. And Intel Optane, I believe, is maxed out at only 64 gigabytes, which I need at least 250 in this build. So for the processor, I went with Intel's 7th generation i7, which is the i7-7700K for short, or cabby-like edition quad-core. Now it's 4.2 gigahertz, it can be overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz, supports everything I need to do. And to keep it within budget, I didn't go with the 8th generation, and I stayed away from AMD for the very same reason. I believe that's like a thousand dollar processor. So I wanted to keep this within the $1,500 budget, which is why I went with the i7. So for the RAM, I went with Corsair's Vengeance LPX, which is DDR4, at 3200 megahertz. So in case you're unaware to put this in layman terms, the higher the megahertz, the faster your RAM is. The faster your RAM is, the faster things open, the faster you can do stuff, basically in layman terms. Now, I'm going with 16 gigabytes. I, there's no reason whatsoever to have more than 16 gigabytes for gaming. You remember, this is specifically for gaming. So for the cooler, I went with Cooler Master Gemini M4. Now, the reason why I went with the Gemini M4 is, one, it's an 1151 socket, but it also has a very low profile, and the bracket for the bottom of the motherboard is one of few that would actually work with this motherboard because of the placement of the SSD card. Now, a lot of you are going to be like, why aren't you going with water cooling? You need to do water cooling. No, you don't. Water cooling is only really good if you plan to overclock the crap out of your equipment. I don't plan to do that whatsoever because you got to understand when you overclock hardware, you wear it out. You push it harder and it lessens the lifespan of the hardware. I have no reason to do that, which is why I'm sticking with an air cooling system. Also, this is a very low profile fan and fits in this case very well. 
Now you're gonna see a pattern of the products that I'm purchasing are all very quiet and as low decibel as possible. This is for when I'm recording. I don't want any of this stuff getting picked up on the microphone and I'm sure you guys aren't gonna hear any of this crap either. So even though the cooler came with thermal compound, I've always been a fan of Arctic. I've used Arctic since the early 2000s when building custom computers. So I went ahead and bought the Arctic MX4, which also has an eight year lifespan, which means you don't really have to replace it ever because you're gonna replace your processor before you need to replace your thermal compound. So for the graphic card, I went with Gigabyte's G1 Gaming GeForce GTX 1060 Overclock Edition. Now this has six gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM, two fans, overclocked the RGB spectrum. So before some of you comment, why don't you just go with the 1080? Well, again, we're keeping this within a $1,500 budget. And for that budget, this is gonna be one of the best graphic cards you can buy. Now for the hard drive, I went with a Western Digital Black. Now this tower only allows 2.5 inch hard drives. And I believe that there's four spaces so you can have four two and a half inch hard drives. And for the highest capacity, Western Digital Black was one terabyte. Now this runs at 7,200 RPM. It's a SATA hard drive at six gigabytes a second with 32 megabytes of cash. Now I know some of you are gonna start commenting, why didn't you go with the Seagate Barracuda? Well, I've always had issues with Seagate in the past. Western Digital, I've never had an issue with in over 20 plus years. So I always continue to have stayed with Western Digital while testing out other brands here and there. However, still to this day, I can't find a more reliable brand than Western Digital. Now, I'm only going with one terabyte because as you know, the main reason for this build is last year. Now, of course, I will be playing a few other games, but this hard drive only really needs to hold a few things, which one being Steam, and obviously the rest of space will just go to video games. And this case was designed to hide some of the wires along the bottom of the case under the graphic card in order to make the inside look a little cleaner. Now, this case also comes with two extenders for your graphic card to help fit it properly. Based on your graphic card, you may need both one or even none. So that should just about finish up the build on the case. Now this case also comes with thumb screws and I much prefer having thumb screws because it makes getting in and out of the case a whole lot easier. Now one of the coolest things that this case comes with are air filters. Now back in the day, what I used to do is buy air filters for an AC unit, cut them out and put them over the fans. These actually are magnetic filters. Now I know a lot of companies have these, but these ones actually will come with the tower. These just magnetically stick over the fans and they prevent dust and dirt from getting inside the computer. Now, in case a lot of you are unfamiliar with this, dust and dirt is the biggest thing that will damage and slow down your hardware. This is why after having a computer for a year or two, your computer starts to feel slow. Well, it's not just because the hardware has been beaten up, but because dust has built up on the inside of the computer on all of the hardware. And when dust gets on the hardware, it just settles on all of the circuitry, which slows down the electrical current. Now, another really cool accessory that this case comes with that I'm not gonna use right now is a controller for an RGB LED. Now, this device allows you to synchronize all your LED RGB lights. Now, what's really cool about this controller is that it has magnets on it and you can stick it anywhere. Now we're gonna jump right into the hardware. For the keyboard, I went with the Corsair Gaming Strafe RGB Mechanical Keyboard. Now there's a lot of reasons why I chose this keyboard, such as how comfortable it is on my wrist, how nice the keys feel. But the two main factors why I chose this keyboard is that one, it's very quiet and the keys aren't picked up very much on the microphone. However, my favorite thing about this keyboard for gaming is that I can change the color of specific keys such as ASD and W. There are also caps I can put over those as well because as you know, in computer gaming, W, A, S, and D is how you move and to have those colors separated makes it much easier for me to find them. Now, a couple of other really cool features about this keyboard is that the stands go out horizontally instead of vertically, which means if you bump the keyboard forward, it's not gonna collapse. So one of the coolest things about this keyboard to me is the fact that I can change the colors of the keys. So when I'm playing games, obviously, like I said before, the W, A, S, and D keys can be in different color. So if we look at this here, all the keys are red except for W, A, S, and D, up, down, left, and right. Those are all white. They also come with different keys for W, A, S, and D, and they also have much better grip on them as well. So as you can see, they're very noticeable. And they also come with replacement keys for Q, W, E, R, and T, which are also commonly used gaming keys as well. However, I just kind of like to keep it separated. I may change the color of the keys for Q, W, E, R, and T. And of course you can take it one step further and use the white color of the keys with the replacement keys as well to help even further differ the keys from one another. As for the mouse, I went with Razer's Death Hatter 
Elite. So why did I choose this specific mouse? Well, I have a numerous amounts of reasons why. However, when I choose a mouse and a keyboard, I'm very specific. I can't really say that this mouse will be the best mouse for you. It all depends on the size of your hands, the shape of your hands. There's lots of variables that go into play. You need to go out. This is one thing where Amazon will not work in the sense of testing it out. Now, purchasing it, yes. However, you need to go out to the store. You need to play with mice. You need to put them on your hand, see how the comfort is with your hand, how much does it slip, how does it feel. However, one thing that I would look for in every single mouse, regardless of anything when it comes to gaming, is the DPI. This one specifically has 16,000 DPI. So when you're talking about 16,000 DPI, the amount of accuracy and speed in that is just insane. So you wanna make sure it has the most DPI possible. There's a lot that have 14 and 15. However, this had 16,000 again. I'm just in awe of 16,000. So because the Gigabyte motherboard has RGB fusion, I can plug the LEDs from the case right into that and use all these different cool patterns. Even as you saw earlier, sync it to music. And of course my personal favorite setting is the CPU temperature monitor, which based on the temperature of the CPU, it'll change the RGB on the front of the computer and the internals anywhere from blue to orange. It's a great way to monitor the temperature of your CPU. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave them down below. If you like this build, if you want more information on this case, there's links down in the description. There's also links to every single part I use so you can purchase them all on Amazon. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up, especially if you're excited for last year. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell because if you don't, you won't be notified of kick-ass videos such as that, especially being that it's October and we have lots of horror shit to come out. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that other great shit. And as always, I'll see you next time.